In this video, I'm going to cover the idle state in Lyra, which includes turning in place and handling idle break animations. All right, so to begin, I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the main animation blueprint for Lyra. I'm closing out of everything here and opening up Blueprint Thread Safe Update Animation as well as the main anim graph. And I'm going to navigate into the locomotion state machine and into the idle state, where we can see that there is a full body idle state linked anim layer, which is linked from a animation blueprint inheriting from animation blueprint item anim layers base, which I will go ahead and open. There is also a function bound to the update of this state, named update idle state. So I will go ahead and search that. All right, here it is. It's pretty simple. It detects whether or not we're blending out of the state. If we are, this turn yaw curve value is set to zero, and the root yaw offset mode is set to accumulate and a process turn yaw curve function is called. We will come back to this. Now, before we go over into the linked anim layer and look at the state setup there, I want to explain what the idle states inside of Lyra does. It handles three things. Idling, just standing still, standing up, and when crouching. And it also and it also handles idle breaks, where the character plays an animation between idling that just breaks up the monotony of just a character being in the same stance. It could be shuffling feet or shifting weight from one foot to another or something along those lines. It also handles turning in place. If I go over into the level here and navigate to characters, heroes, Simple Hero Pawn. I'm going to open this pawn up. I'm going to select its capsule. And I'm going to search up Hidden. I'm going to uncheck Hidden in Game, Compile, Save, and I'm going to click Play. And now you can see that as I move the capsule, as I turn, the capsule is rotating to face the orientation of the camera. This happens when I'm standing still, and it happens when I'm moving around. This is true for the symbol hero pawn. It's also true for the actual characters that use the animation blueprints that I am covering. So, this brings up the question, when the character is standing still, how does the character keep from rotating? The method that Lyra uses is to rotate the root bone of, a, of the skeletal mesh to counter the rotation of the capsule while the character is standing still. We can see this if we go to the main anim graph and make our way over to this function here, rotate root bone, where as an input for yaw, root to yaw offset is bound to the node. I'll read this comment. When the pawn owner rotates, the mesh component rotates with it, which causes the feet to slide. Here we counter the character's rotation to keep the feet planted. We can go over to a blueprint thread safe update animation. And we can find an update root yaw offset function. This function handles updating the yaw offset depending on the current state of the pawn owner. When the feet aren't moving, example, during idle, offset the root in the opposite direction to the pawn owner's rotation to keep the mesh from rotating with the pawn. So there's this root yaw offset node enumerator. It has three different things in it, blend out, hold, and accumulate. If the mode is accumulate, then root yaw offset is going to be set by root yaw offset minus yaw delta since last update. And now the yaw delta since last update you can find where that's set back in the update rotation data function and the blueprint thread safe update animation function. So, I'm going to read this comment here as well. 
We clamp the offsets because it large offsets the character has to aim too far backwards, which over twists the spine. The turn in place animations will usually keep up with the offset, but this clamp will cause the feet to slide if the user rotates the camera too quickly. If desired, this clamp could be replaced by having aim animations that can go up to 180 degrees or by triggering the turn in place animations more aggressively. So this logic here is clamping the in root yaw offset, which is the input here for the function, between the values in this 2D vector root yaw offset angle clamp. So from negative 120 to 100. However, it can also clamp them between these two values, negative 90 to 80, if the character is crouching. So there's a separate 2D vector variable for each of these situations. Next, aiming needs to counter the root yaw offset to keep the weapon aiming in line with the camera. So the root yaw offset is multiplied by negative 1, and aim yaw is set. And this all happens if the root yaw offset mode is set to accumulate meaning that the character is standing still and rotation of the capsule and actor needs to be countered. Next, it checks if the mode is blend out. And the comment here just says, when in motion, smoothly blend out of the offset or out the offset. So if the character is dashing or the root yaw offset mode is set to blend out, then a float spring interp function is used to interpolate the root yaw offset to zero using a root yaw offset spring state variable to keep track of whatever this node is doing. And then it also takes in delta time and it, it sets root yaw offset with the return value. After all of this, it resets the root yaw offset mode to blend out. This is because this is what the majority of states in Lyra would need to use and it avoids needing to manually tag states with this by setting the enumerator to blend out if it's not just the default. Now if an, a state needs to use accumulate or hold which will just not affect it at all that can be tagged manually by setting the enumerator from a function bound to some node inside of the state. So now that we understand the event graph logic behind the root yaw offset stuff, let's head back over to this update idle state function. Here we see where it says process turn yaw curve. I'll read this comment here. When the yaw offset gets too big, we trigger turn-in-place animations to rotate the character back. Example, if the character is rotated 90 degrees to the right, it will be facing the character's right shoulder. If we play an animation that rotates the character 90 degrees to the left, the character will once again be facing away from the camera. We use the turn yaw anim modifier, animation modifier to generate the necessary curves on each turn-in-place animation. See Animation Blueprints Item Anim Layers Base for examples of triggering turn-in-place animations, and we will be looking at that soon here. The Turn Yaw Weight Curve is set to 1 in turn-in-place animations, so its current value from Get Curve Value will be the current weight of the turn-in-place animation. We can use this to unweight the turn-in-place animation to get the full remaining Turn Yaw Curve value. So we take this Turn Yaw Curve value, which we set further up here, and we set a previous turn yaw curve value. Next, we get the curve value from turn yaw weight, and also a curve value for remaining turn yaw. Let's go ahead and find an animation for turning in place. I'll just look for locomotion, unarmed, I'm going to search up turn. Here we go. Um, unarmed turn left 90. So here we can see, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck enable root motion and force root lock so we can watch the character turn. And now we can see this remaining turn yaw curve which goes from negative 90 to 0. 
So it goes up towards zero from negative 90 as the character is rotating and is at zero when the character is fully rotated. And then we have turn yaw wait, which is set to one, but then goes down to zero when the character is no longer turning. So it's checking if the turn yaw wait is nearly equal to zero. If that is true, turn yaw curve value is set to zero and previous turn yaw curve value is also set to zero, which is what happens in the animation, but maybe there's some animations where that isn't always true, or situations where that might not always be true. Next, but if this is false, and this is not nearly equal to zero, then it is going to get the remaining turn yaw and divide it by the weight. You, for most of the turn, this weight is going to be one, so the remaining turn yaw is not modified in any way by this node here. And then turn yaw curve value is set to remaining turn yaw. Avoid applying the curve delta when the curve first becomes relevant. Example, when a turn animation starts, the previous curve value will be 0 and the current value will be 90, but no actual rotation has happened yet. So if the previous turn yaw curve value is not equal to 0, then it's going to set the root yaw offset. It sets the root yaw offset to root yaw offset minus turn yaw curve value minus previous turn yaw curve value. So you subtract previous turn yaw curve value from turn yaw curve value to get the difference between ticks. Then subtract that from root yaw offset and set the root yaw offset with that using the same function. And that is how the root yaw offset is applied from um, when you're standing still and idling, but also cancel back out as you're turning. Now we can look over into the item anim layer space for an example of how these turn in place animations are being called or applied or activated. I'm going to close out of all of this and I'm going to find the idle state layer. Here it is. Now we can see that there's an idle state machine here, and if we open it up, we have four states, an idle, an idle break, which we will come back around to, a turn in place rotation, and a turn in place recovery. Now we can transition from either of these states into turn in place rotation if the absolute value of the root yaw offset is greater than 90. I'm sorry, I misread that, 50. And the reason these transitions here are colored is because it's using a, it's using transition rule sharing. Um, let's, I'll show you an example of how to set this up, but essentially you can create a transition, create some rules for it, and then you can just pretty easily use those same rules for other transitions and you don't have to copy and paste stuff around. I'll show you guys in case you're unaware. I'll add a state, I'll add another state. And I can take this transition, and I'll need to add a third state to show this. I'll take this transition, and we don't really need to change anything in it. I'm just going to, where it says transition rule sharing, I'm going to click promote to shared, give it a name. I'll name it test. It gives it a color. And if I want this transition to share the same rules as that transition, I can just click the use shared drop down menu and select test. And I delete all that out and now so the idle state has an idle stance state and there's some stuff going on here but we'll come back to that I want to finish covering turn in place before we jump back to that because then we'll just end up jumping back to turn in place so I'll read this comment when the yaw offset gets big enough we trigger a turn in place animation to reduce the offset turn in place animations often end with some settling motion when the rotation is finished during this time we move the turn in place we move to the turn in place recovery state, which can transition back to the turn in place rotation state if the offset gets big again. This way we can keep playing the rotation part of the turn in place animations if the pawn owner keeps rotating without waiting for the settle to finish. So, turn in place rotation has a sequence evaluator and there are three functions bound to these nodes. Let's look at the functions bound to the evaluator before we look at the function bound to the output animation pose. We have set up turn in place anim and update turn in place anim. I'm going to search up set up turn in place anim. 
also going to open up update turn in place anim okay so it sets a turn in place anim time to zero it can it and then it sets the explicit time of the sequence evaluator to zero as well for the update turn in place anim it sets a sequence with inertial blending that it uses this function here select turn in place animation it takes in a turn in place rotation direction float let's see if we can't find that being set somewhere in this function i'm suspecting that it is i've looked at most of the turn in place and idle stuff before i started recording but there's a couple of things i have not looked at yet ah here we go so we're looking for turn in place rotation direction and here it is we get the root yaw offset. We take it through a sign function, which will return a negative one if it is less than zero and a positive one if it is more than zero. Multiply that by a negative one so we get the inverse. So if root yaw offset is 90, it'll return one. Multiply by negative one, you get negative one. It sets turn in place rotation direction. And that's all that this um, setup turn in place rotation state function does. We'll close out of it out of the setup function too and it selects a turn in place animation based on this input direction if it's greater than zero it selects left if it's less than zero it selects right and the left or right animation that is used is determined by whether or not we are crouching or standing and these are all just anim sequence um, variables here that are unset in this blueprint because they can be set with other blueprints and the other child blueprints that inherit from this one. Now that a sequence has been set, it's going to set the turn in place anim time for the evaluator. And I want to um, note here that to set the explicit time of an evaluator, you have to set its thing here to dynamic to set the um, pose the, not the pose, the sequence, you also have to set that to dynamic in the drop down menu here. So instead of expose the spin, you want to set it to dynamic value to change these inbound functions. So it gets a delta time, so add turn, adds the turn in place anim time, and sets turn in place anim time. So it's just delta time accumulated over time. Next, it sets the explicit time to the turn in place anim time, and that's all there is to it. The other animation graph can read the curves and rotate the root in the ways that the root needs to be rotated. Now turn in place rotation can transition to the recovery if the turn yaw weight is nearly equal to zero. Turn in place recovery uses a sequence player with a dynamic sequence and the and it uses uh, the start position um, the start position is turn in place anim time. There are two functions here, update turn in place recovery anim and set up turn in place recovery state. So let's look at set up turn in place recovery state. It's simple. It takes the turn in place rotation direction and sets the turn in place recovery direction. Then it updates the, I mean, now we'll look at the update turn in place recovery anim function. It sets the sequence with inertial blending by selecting a turn in place animation. And so it continues to play a turn in place animation, but you're able to, which, so the recovery is built into the animation, but then you can blend back into turn in place rotation to start over again. Now, back to the idle state. We have a setup idle state and an update idle state. Setup idle state um, calls two functions, choose idle break delay time and reset idle break transition logic. Choose idle break delay time uses some logic that depends on the location of the pawn order to have a roughly consistent behavior across clients without having every character playing idle break at the same time. So it gets the X and Y world location, adds them together, gets the absolute value, truncates it. Um, 
forms a modulo, adds 6, converts that to a float, and sets the idle break delay time. So it just keeps the all the characters from playing the same idle breaks at the same times. Next, it sets idle break delay. It sets time until next idle break to idle break delay time. Next, we have update idle state. It checks if we're blending out, and if we're not blending out, it processes the idle break transition logic, which checks whether or not we can play an idle break, which is true if the length of the idle break's animation sequence array is greater than zero. And the reason that all these are variables, these sequences I may have covered, I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the previous, on the previous video, but episode two, I should have um, the their other blueprints again that inherit from this one and they swap out different animation sets so these are all variables so that they can be set in those blueprints so if we have idle breaks we can play and any of these state and none of these states are true then we can play idle breaks and if we can play idle breaks we subtract delta time from the time until next idle break and set delta the time until next idle break This is false, we reset the idle break transition logic. That's it for the update idle state function. So now let's enter the idle stance state. We have idle, and then we have stance transition. So this is for going from idling to crouching. The idle state has an update idle anim function bound to the sequence player with a sequence set to dynamic. So let's search up update idle anim. And this is simply going to set a sequence with inertial blending based on whether or not we are aiming down sights or crouching. We can transition into stance transition if we are if the, this crouch state change boolean is set to true. So let's go back into the main animation blueprint and search up that crouch state change. We may have covered it in the first video. I honestly don't remember, and I want to make sure I cover it in this one. It is related to idling. I'm hitting control spacebar instead of actually clicking on the uh, bind magnifying glass here. Whoops. <laughs> so let's see. Crouch state. There we go. Inside of update character state data, we can we'll, it'll set crouch state changed. So it checks first, it sets first was crouching last update, then gets whether or not we're crouching, and sets whether or not we're crouching. If crouching does not equal was crouching last update, crouch state changes set to, well, true. If it does, it's set to false. So it's only true for one update, which is all that this um, needs to transition into this state, which then um, has that same function bound set up idle transition, and so it'll blend into a crouch state. Now it'll transition back within um, automatic rule based on sequence player in state and yet the animation has ended which is odd um it is looping the animation so i'm not sure when that would be called but i do know that it will transfer back when the crouch state change becomes true again next we have idle breaks Idle will transition into idle break if time until next idle break is less than or equal to zero. The idle break has a sequence player with a dynamic sequence, and when it becomes relevant, it sets up idle break and the idle break anim with a setup idle break anim function. It gets an array of idle breaks, gets the current idle break index, sets the sequence. It increments the current idle break index, but if it 
then, but then it checks if the current idle break index is greater than the length of the idle break array. And if that is true, it sets the current idle break index back to zero. And now we can transition from idle break back into idle. If the animation is finished, you can see this automatic rule based on sequence player and state, which is what that does. If can play idle break is not true. And if they're fi if the character is firing its weapon. And so I believe that that is it for the full body idle state anim layer. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There's more Lyra animation videos coming in the future. I'm going to continue to cover individual layers and states in these videos until we've made it through the whole animation graph. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.